This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Elon Musk is venturing into risky waters. He's going to host a live presentation tonight on Twitter with Florida's Republican governor, Ron DeSantis, as DeSantis officially announces his run to become president of the United States. Automotive executives in the U.S. have never become publicly involved with any political party or candidate. They know that if they do, it will instantly turn the other side against them and their company. But Elon Musk is unlike any other automotive executive, and he's obviously aware of the risks. And while Musk will probably not endorse DeSantis on tonight's program, last year he said he would support DeSantis if he ran for president. Ford is going to keep AM radios in cars after all. Back in April, it said it would get rid of AM from both its EVs and ICE vehicles. Ford said owners could stream AM with apps instead. But yesterday on social media, CEO Jim Farley said the company will include AM radio and new models going forward, and that Ford will offer a software update to owners who currently don't have it. Farley said the company changed its mind after speaking with government officials who are concerned about getting broadcast warnings out during an emergency. They say AM is more reliable than streaming during an emergency. Last week, a group of bipartisan lawmakers introduced a bill to force automakers to include AM radio after Ford and several other automakers said they will or have gotten rid of it. Legacy automakers are in a mad scramble to come up with their own software-defined car a concept that was first pioneered by Tesla over a decade ago. And that's where almost every single function of a car is defined by software. Most of their SDVs, or software-defined vehicles, will not be out till around 2025. And different automakers are taking different paths to get there. Some, like Ford, want to do it all in-house. But others, like Renault, are relying on a consortium of partners. Renault will have Google develop its operating system and digital twins. Qualcomm will develop its digital chassis and SOC, or system on a chip. And Valeo is going to supply the high-performance computer that will be the brains of the system. No doubt we're going to see different approaches from different OEMs to come up with their own SDVs. Aston Martin is really on a roll. Last week, Geely announced it was investing another $290 million into the company, and Aston also announced it's coming out with eight new models over the next two years. And today it announced that it will have Honda be its engine supplier in Formula One starting with the 2026 season. Aston currently uses engines from Mercedes, and the announcement came as a surprise because everyone thought that Honda was dropping out of F1 when the current regulations expire at the end of the 2025 season. But Formula One's efforts at sustainability fit in line with Honda's corporate mission, and so that's why it's returning in full force. Aston has surprised everyone in F1 this year, emerging as the second best team in the series. First is Red Bull, which uses Honda engines. So, with Honda coming on board, Aston has its sights set on winning championships, not just scoring points. We want to know what drives your testing. OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing, Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. EV owners drive less than ICE owners. A new study from IC Car says the average three-year-old EV is driven a little over 9,000 miles a year compared to about 13,000 miles for an ICE vehicle. That's about a third less. Not surprisingly, Teslas are driven the most, probably because they have longer range and a reliable supercharger network that reduces range anxiety. If you take Tesla out, the average drops to just 6,719 miles. The Porsche Taycan is the least driven EV at less than 5,000 miles a year. 
IC Car says EVs with higher ranges are used more, but adding that range will significantly increase prices at today's battery costs. BMW revealed the all-new 5 Series sedan this morning. It's longer, wider, and taller than the outgoing model. The lines on this car are very crisp, meaning the edges of the styling elements are well-defined and end at sharp corners. Depending on the market, there will be a number of powertrains to choose from, including gas and diesel, which all come with 48-volt mild hybrid tech and are paired to an 8-speed auto, as well as plug-in hybrid and, for the first time, pure battery electric. Right now, the EV, called the i5, will be offered in two versions. There's a rear-drive model that makes 340 horsepower and an all-wheel drive M performance model that makes 601 horsepower and will do 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in 3.8 seconds. But there will also be a non-performance all-wheel drive i5 that comes out sometime next year. All of those models feature an 81.2 kilowatt hour battery pack that provides roughly 500 to 580 kilometers or 310 to 360 miles of range for the rear drive i5 and 455 to 516 kilometers or 280 to 320 miles of range for the performance version. They can handle a charge rate of up to 205 kilowatts and can charge from 10 to 80% in 30 minutes. All versions of the new 5 Series get model-specific chassis tuning, but the Performance i5 steps that up a notch with optional sport suspension and brakes, as well as an active chassis control system. The interior of the new 5 Series blends a lot of different materials and textures together, and BMW says it focused on reducing the number of buttons and controls by baking more features into the latest generation of its iDrive operating system. Information is displayed on two large digital screens on the dash that are combined under one piece of curved glass. This new electronic architecture also allows for expanded level two autonomous driving. It will launch highway assistant in the US, Canada, and Germany which allows drivers to take their hands off the wheel at speeds up to 130 kilometers an hour or 85 miles an hour, as well as change lanes. But it will only operate on barrier-divided highways. BMW says the market launch of the new 5 Series starts this October. Stellantis is expanding its V to X, or Vehicle to Everything communication in North America. Currently, more than 1.8 million Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram vehicles from 2018 and newer can warn drivers about active emergency vehicles or other road hazards nearby through the vehicle's Uconnect system. But it's now expanding that to include warnings about disabled vehicles, which don't have to come from a Stellantis vehicle necessarily. An alert from the disabled vehicle either activated manually by the driver or automatically by the vehicle, is transmitted to the Uconnect system to warn drivers. They get 15 to 20 seconds of advanced warning, which is about a quarter mile at highway speeds. According to research published in the public health journal Accident Analysis and Prevention, disabled vehicles contribute to a crash every seven minutes on average in the U.S. and kill or injure more than 40 people a day. The Opel Corsa is getting a refresh. Styling has been updated to fall more in line with the rest of the Opel family, including a new front-end design, which includes a fresh lower fascia. A new fully digital cockpit will be available, which combines two 10-inch displays that now run off a of Qualcomm technology. The Corsa will be the first Opel to offer 48-volt mild hybrid technology, and like most new Stellantis vehicles, Range and performance improvements are being made to the all-electric version. It will have two drive options, either 100 kilowatts or 136 horsepower, or 115 kilowatts or 156 horsepower. The less powerful version has an estimated 357 kilometers or 221 miles of range, 
while the other has 402 kilometers, or roughly 250 miles of range. And speaking of refreshes, VW has a few updates for the Touareg. There's small tweaks to the front and rear fascias, as well as a new Matrix LED lighting option. The suspension has been updated, and now includes a sensor that can detect weight on the roof and make adjustments to improve driving stability. Lastly, VW's Innovation Cockpit now comes standard on the Touareg. Goes on sale tomorrow with a starting price of just over 69,000 euros. And that brings us to the end of today's show. Thanks for making AutoLine a part of your day. AutoLine Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game. And by Scheffler, we pioneer motion. At Scheffler, we pioneer motion. Electrifying mobility. Manufacturing smarter. Reducing CO2 emissions. Making energy production clean. Scheffler pioneers motion to advance how the world moves.